Do you cross stitch the Danish way or the English way? Well, there's a pretty good chance you don't know and you probably do both of them. So in this video today, I want to talk through what the differences are between these two cross stitch methods and when you might want to use each of them. Hi everyone, I'm Kat from Catkin and Lily, bringing you the best tips, tricks and tutorials so you can get the most joy from your stitching. I found myself fascinated by the differences between the English method and the Danish method for cross stitching so much so that I might have dived quite deep into this topic and I have a lot of information to share. So please use the timestamps in the description if you want to find or revisit a particular section. And maybe hit that subscribe button now just to get it out the way before we dive into comparing these stitching methods. Okay, let's take a look. So the obvious place to start is by answering what is English or Danish cross stitching? Well, very simply, the English method is to make a full cross stitch and then another one and then another one and so on. So one full cross stitch at a time. So you can see I've already made some stitches here. So to continue in the English method, I would make the bottom arm of my cross stitch and then the top arm of my cross stitch. And I would continue making each individual cross stitch like so. And obviously I've then worked that row from left to right. And if I wanted to go back, then again, I would now work my cross stitches each individually, making the bottom arm and then the top arm. So I completed each cross stitch one at a time. So that's the English method. Okay, so the Danish method, I come over here, is to make a row of half cross stitches. So I would make all the bottom arms of my cross stitches first. So that's all the bottom arms completed. And then I would go back along the row, completing the top arms. So you can see when you're working with this Danish method, you're going to start and finish the row in the same place. I've started at the left hand end. Work to the right and then work back. So I finished up at the left hand end. So to complete a row underneath, I'm then going to go underneath like that. Now you know that, I bet you've done both of these methods at times, but just didn't know that they actually had names. And I certainly use both methods because they do have pros and cons, and there are situations where each is more useful. I find the Danish method brilliant for blocks of colour. So if I'm stitching a design like this, almost everything would be stitched in the Danish method. So I would stitch rows on the heart going across and back again. I stitch the leaves, each row back and, and across. On the part, I would stitch the rows going back and across. And one reason I like this method is because it's usually a little bit quicker and easier to work this way, as you're essentially batching the work by doing all the bottom arms first and then going back to complete the top arms. But the main reason for me to use this method is that I find it looks neater when I stitch whole rows in this method rather than doing individual stitches one at a time. Let me show you what I mean. So here I have two sample blocks of stitching and I've stitched each row horizontally, one with the English method and one with the Danish method. And can you see a difference? Well, the one on the right is the Danish method. And for me, I find that a little neater looking overall. And I'll come back to why this might be the case later. Now, I'm aware that some cross stitchers like to complete blocks of colour in vertical columns instead of rows. So I wondered how this would look when stitched in each of the two methods. Especially as I've seen recommendations not to use the Danish method for vertical columns of stitches. So here we have two sample blocks. Again, one in Danish, one in English method. And this time I've worked in vertical columns. And can you see any difference here? I think the difference is even more obvious. And this time it is indeed the English method that is neater. 
at least to my eyes. For completeness, here are all four samples together. And certainly for my stitching, it looks neater for me to stitch horizontal rows using the Danish method. So that's what I would use as much as possible. Unless I had a single column of vertical stitches, when I would use the English method and complete one full cross stitch at a time. Now there are some other situations where you might want to use the English method and I'll come on to those in a minute. But first I want to talk really quickly about why the methods may vary in neatness of stitching. And this is going to get pretty pedantic, so if you're not really into this then feel free to skip on to the next section. And I think it all comes down to the way that the thread is pulled on the back of the stitching. Because with the different methods, the thread will be pulled in different directions on the back. And firstly, this can really subtly alter the shape of the cross stitch on the front. And secondly, the direction the thread's pulled can make it easier or harder to get the needle through holes that already have thread in them, while keeping those threads lying neatly and evenly. And you might have noticed sometimes when you push the needle through a hole, it can distort the threads of the cross stitches you've already completed and push them so they separate slightly or don't lie as neatly. So when you stitch horizontal rows with the Danish method, the thread makes exactly the same pattern and is pulled in exactly the same direction on the back for every single cross stitch. So they look identical from the front as well, and that makes it look neat overall. When you stitch horizontal rows with the English method, the way the thread lies on the back will be different for each alternate row, because you're working on one row from left to right, and then the next row the other way from right to left. So although each stitch is neat, they look slightly different on each row and that affects the overall impression of neatness. Now when it comes to stitching in vertical columns, the reason that I found the Danish method to be so untidy looking, I think is because of the way the thread was being pulled. It was really hard to get my needle into the hole without distorting the threads that were already in there. And for me, that's why I felt it looked less neat. So having said that I would generally want to use the Danish method where I can as much as possible, let's talk about when it might be preferable to use the English method. And the first situation is the one I've already mentioned about when I have columns that are just a single stitch wide. So I would complete these on the heart. I would do these in the English method. I would work from bottom to top, completing each full stitch all the way up. The second is for polka dots. So on this heart, for example, here, I would complete each stitch and move to the next one because you're going to have to travel your thread quite a long way between each of these. So I don't want to work a half stitch for all of these and then go back across them all. I'd work each one individually and move to the next one. The next situation where you might consider using the English method is to travel around your pattern. So you might use it to get your thread from one part of the design to another. For example, you could stitch a row in the English method in order to end up where you need to do the next stitches of that colour. Now, given what I said about how I find this less neat when I stitch like this, I generally don't do this and I would still complete the row in the Danish way and then I would just travel my thread along the back, tucking it under a few stitches as I go. The final situation where English stitching is preferable is for variegated threads because it allows those colour changes to be the most defined. But there's no reason you can't do Danish for this as well, it will just look different. So are there any other differences or considerations to using these two methods? Well, as you can see from this bit we stitched earlier, they look different on the back. Because with English stitching, a row of completed stitches will have a combination of vertical and diagonal lines. And with Danish, you just have vertical lines. So let's take a look at that in more detail. Here's the back of the sample piece we looked at earlier. And you can see the difference here when I stitch the horizontal rows. Now, I like the way it looks with all vertical stitches, but you might prefer the other way, or more likely might not care one way or the other. Some cross stitches also find one way easier to run the needle under to secure the threads at the end. But you'd have to test to see which you prefer, because I really haven't found there to be any difference. The diagonal stitch on the back is also the reason that you'll hear that stitching with the English method uses more thread. Because for each cross stitch there are two vertical lines on the back for the Danish method, but one vertical and one diagonal line for the English method. 
and since a diagonal line across a square will always be longer than a line along one side, you would expect it to use slightly more thread. But when I stitched my samples, I found that I used exactly the same amount of thread for the horizontal blocks of either method. And that's because whilst each stitch technically uses a teeny bit more thread for the English method, when you move from one row to the next, you only cross one block with the English method, but you have to cross two blocks on the back with the Danish method. So it basically cancels out. Now that does depend exactly on how you stitch and because I was stitching full blocks, again, it could be a little bit different. But I think the point here is that if there's any difference at all, it's so marginal that it really isn't worth worrying about. Now, when I stitched the vertical columns, I did find that I used more thread for the English method by quite a bit. I used 34 centimetres instead of 30 centimetres. So there is a difference there. Now, earlier I also said it's often considered quicker to stitch with the Danish method. But I didn't really find any difference in the time it took to stitch the blocks using any of the four options. Now, I suspect this is because they were just simple blocks. And I think the perceived increased speed from the Danish method is down to it just being easier to count and follow the pattern, not the speed of the actual stitching. And the final point regarding the different appearance on the back is that having a combination of vertical and diagonal stitches on the back is also why the English method is considered more durable because it holds the fabric together better. Now, I'm not sure I've ever noticed my cross stitching needing to be more durable, but I suspect this could have been useful in the past. And finally, if you've been waiting to hear why the methods are named as such, then I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you because I can't find a reason anywhere. Cross stitching spread across Europe in the early 1500s, so there's a good chance it was being done in England and Denmark at about the same time. And it is possible that the names refer to the ways that it developed in each of these countries, but there is absolutely no evidence on it one way or the other. I'm going to finish up by saying what I always say, which is there's no right or wrong way to make your cross stitches. So do it the way that you like to do it best. I'm just sharing the nitty gritty details here because I really like understanding all those little details and I'm willing to bet some of you do too. So are you an English method stitcher or a Danish method stitcher? Or a bit of both like me? I'm always really interested to hear how other people stitch or if any of this was new to you, so please do let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay in the loop for all the good stitchy stuff to come. Thank you so much for watching and happy stitching.